In this video, we're going to answer that age-old question, should I choose Z-Wave or Zigbee? And hopefully by the end, you'll have the information you need to decide which one can help you automate the boring stuff. Welcome back to Slacker Labs, my name is Jeff. To Z-Wave or to Zigbee? That is the question. And I think with matter on the horizon, that question is becoming more relevant. Because who wants to invest in smart home technology that is going to be obsolete in a couple of years? But matter isn't here yet. And both Z-Wave and Zigbee are compelling choices. And I would love to say that this decision is easy, but it isn't. So instead of telling you which one you should choose, I'm going to lay out how these two standards are similar, and how they're different, and how I use them in my smart home. So by the end of this video, hopefully you will have more information that can help you decide how they fit in your smart home vision. Both Z-Wave and Zigbee have a lot in common. Both of these standards were created in the early 2000s. So in terms of technology, they've been around for a while, which means they've had lots of opportunities to mature and get better. Zigbee has started to morph into matter and Z-Wave has their 700 series chips, which have brought some improvements like better battery life and longer range. Both protocols also create a low power mesh network and can operate completely locally. They even have close to the same number of certified devices on the market. 4,100 plus Z-Wave devices out there on the market according to the Z-Wave Alliance, and over 4,000 Zigbee devices according to the CSA. And both protocols are trying to solve the same problem. They are both standards created to help guide companies in creating interoperable smart home devices. But they chose two different paths to achieve this, which has led to some major differences. The big one is radio frequency. Z-Wave operates in the 900 megahertz range, which depending on where you are in the world could mean that you're more susceptible to radio interference. Not to mention that Z-Wave operates on different frequencies in different countries around the world. On the other hand, Zigbee operates in the 2.4 gigahertz range, which is already congested thanks to our everyday Wi-Fi. So interference with Zigbee devices is possible as well. But Zigbee frequencies are more standard across the globe, which makes it easier to shop for Zigbee devices. The biggest impact, though, from the differences in frequency is probably range. Z-Wave gets the edge here, due to its lower frequency and how radio signals work. But there are a lot of variables that can impact signal range. So while on paper Z-Wave seems to be the better choice, in real world, the difference between the two may not be all that clear. Another difference is how these standards were designed. Z-Wave is a closed source standard, while Zigbee is open source. And the biggest difference that that has brought is probably interoperability. Since the Z-Wave standard is controlled centrally, a certified Z-Wave device will work with any Z-Wave radio, past or present, as long as it's on the same frequency. Zigbee devices can be certified without following the Zigbee standard, which means it's possible to buy a Zigbee device off the shelf that doesn't work with your Zigbee radio. That certification process may also impact the price, which is why I suspect Z-Wave devices are more expensive than Zigbee ones, although as of late it appears that the prices are getting closer between the two different protocols, which may be in part to the Z-Wave Alliance recently moving from a for-profit entity to a non-profit. In any case, interoperability appears to be less of an issue with Z-Wave than with Zigbee. And then there's the pairing process, which may be the biggest reason why I would choose a Z-Wave device over a Zigbee device. Z-Wave devices tend to make the relationship with their coordinator a little more formal, whereas Zigbee devices appear to be a little more casual. When pairing a Z-Wave device, especially the newer devices, you may be required to enter a code that's printed on the physical device before you can complete the pairing process. I consider this a security feature because you can't add a Z-Wave device to your smart home unless you have physical access to that device. HomeKit does something similar as well. And once paired, that Z-Wave device cannot be moved to a different Z-Wave network unless you unpair it or factory reset that device. Zigbee devices, on the other hand, don't care if they've already been paired. If you put an already paired Zigbee device in pairing mode and there happens to be another radio out there listening and accepting devices, that device could pair with that other radio without a second thought, leaving you with a Zigbee device you can't control. Although that feature can be beneficial when you're trying to troubleshoot a Zigbee device, but it can also be a potential security issue, albeit not really likely. And lastly, you have the mesh network design. The Z-Wave standard only allows four hops between a device and its coordinator, 
which may be there in order to ensure a good experience due to its lower transmission speeds. Zigbee, on the other hand, doesn't limit the number of hops between a device and its coordinator, but given its faster transmission speeds, it may not have a negative impact on your network. In either case, designing a good Z-Wave network may require more care, especially given your house layout. So with all of this, which protocol is best for your house? Given that both of these standards are setting out to solve the same problem, I can see how it's often thought to be a one or other decision. But personally, I think it's both. And I know that's going to sound like a cop-out, but I think their differences make them better suited for solving different problems in our smart homes. And honestly, if you're trying to build the best smart home, I think it's important to be technology agnostic and focus on the solution and not the protocols. So with all of their differences, I tend to think of Z-Wave devices as more permanent and secure than Zigbee devices. And really, that's all to do with the Z-Wave pairing process, because it makes it harder for a bad actor to take control of those devices. I mean, a power flicker could put a Zigbee device in pairing mode, and if your neighbor is trying to add Zigbee devices at the same time, it's possible that your Zigbee device could be added to their network instead of yours. Granted, that particular scenario is not something that is likely to happen, or something that we should really be concerned with. But given that Z-Wave could add a little more protection just in case, I tend to use Z-Wave devices for anything that is security related. For example, smoke detectors, door locks, which probably should be local anyway, and anything hardwired like light switches. Zigbee devices in my house tend to be more context-based sensors, like motion and temperature sensors. And the only time I've broken that rule is recently I added Zigbee contact sensors to my doors for my security system. But choosing both is not always a good option for everyone. So if keeping price down is a major influence in designing your smart home, I would stick with Zigbee because those devices do tend to be cheaper. If trying to keep things as secure as possible is your major influence in designing your smart home, then I would probably stick with the Z-Wave devices. The reality is they both have their pros and cons, and it really does come down to personal preference. But if you're running a platform like Home Assistant that can run both Z-Wave and Zigbee, why not choose both, and then choose the best solution for your smart home problem instead of walling yourself into a particular garden. Now, the question of Matter versus Z-Wave becomes a little more interesting, at least on paper, because in terms of interoperability, I think Matter is going to have the edge. But I'm not sure Matter can deliver what it's promised, so we're going to have to wait and see if it becomes a serious question. For now, there's not really a perfect choice between Z-Wave or Zigbee, so regardless of which one you choose, it's going to serve you well. In any case, I hope this video gave you a little more information so you can make an informed decision about how Z-Wave and Zigbee fit into your smart home vision. If you're interested in Z-Wave, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already because a video on how to set up Z-Wave JS in Home Assistant will be dropping soon. For those of you wanting to know more about how to set up Zigbee in Home Assistant, check out this video on ZHA that I recently did that will walk you through setting up ZHA and get Zigbee running in your smart home. And now we've reached the point in this video where it's time to go automate the boring stuff. Thank you.